the SI badge. Yes, I'm calling it an SI. This isn't an SIR or a VTI or anything like that. It is an SI. And this was the last one in stock. Called Honda, out of the blue, they said, yep. Make sure the clutch is good and verify that wheel bearing. I don't know if you can hear that. I mean, listen to this. I mean, 40 miles an hour. Sounds like a tornado in the car. I mean, that is pretty loud. One of the problems it had also was the blown fuse for the air pump. Now, there is a TSB for this, so we picked up a used one, and that didn't fix the issue. It popped the 60 amp fuse each time. Well, it wasn't that. We pulled the air pump off, and if you smell this thing, it smells like burnt electrical. So this is our problem. We put a used pump back in there, and of course, relay two. That fixed our issue, put the fuse back in. Now that cycles and does what it's supposed to do. So that part is fixed. This is next in the shop. This is a 2008 S2000. One of the ways you know it's the 2008 or 2009 is the V3 wheels. These are my favorite wheels. And valve adjustment, oil change, brake and clutch flush, trans fluid, diff fluid, rebuild the shifter, new TCT. We're gonna check the 12 volt output. That's the one that sits between the seats. It's notorious for breaking. I'll show you that real quick. This is the 12 volt output and they're notorious for being loose. Well, the problem is, is if you put anything in there, if you put your phone charger or any kind of outlet, when you open the door right here, it falls on top of this and breaks it down. There is a clip that you can push on the backside. The problem is over time, it kind of expands and it doesn't stay in there. You barely touch this thing and the clip falls off. There is a new clip available for that. You can get it from your Honda dealership. You see these things on eBay, these uh, guaranteed to make uh, power, increase gas mileage, uh, make torque, all this good stuff. It essentially taps into the air temp sensor. This is a resistor and what it does is dependent on the temperature, it tells the computer a resistance, the computer converts that into a temperature. This over here intercepts this and essentially lies to the computer. It tells the computer it's doing something different to what it is. Let me show you real quick. So the car is sat overnight and this is showing ECT, which is a coolant temperature of 88. So that's pretty close to what the ambient air temperature is right now. I just looked at our thermometer on the wall and it's showing 89. Well, if I scroll down here to intake air temperature right there, it just clicked over to 100. So that's basically changing the resistance and telling the car it's hotter than what it is by about 11 degrees. So what that does is the computer sees that and it leans out the mixture. So it pulls a little bit of fuel and it kind of gives you a little bit of horsepower from that. It's kind of a way of cheating the computer. I mean, it's it works, it's not the best. We've shown this countless times on our videos in the past. Now, this isn't just to tell everybody, hey, look how good we are. We're just going to send your spark plug cover. Come to LHT. We're fantastic. No, this is one of those things. It's just a reminder, even to you shop owners, when you're working on someone's car, just one of those little things goes a long way. I mean, this isn't a big deal, but when it's cleaned and goes back on the car, uh, the customer pops the hood. This is one of those things that stands out and it goes, wow, that just uh, looks cool and it just shows that someone cares. This is one of the best things you can do to your S2000 that's so simple, is to do a shifter rebuild. I've done a past video on this, so I won't do it over again. You can just watch that, I'll link the video. This is one of our best sellers in the store. We sell tons and tons and tons of these kits to a point where Honda probably wonder what we're doing with all these because we order so many. This is the way we sell our basic ship to rebuild kit. It comes with a cage, the ball, and of course uh, some uh, Eurora grease. Well, what we're going to do is take this cage off and take this ball off. Now, I'm going to tell you again, I tell this so many times, and it's in the store. Make sure you warm this guy up, put it in a cup of water, not boiling, but as hot as you can stand. Leave it in there for five minutes. What that does, it makes it a little bit softer. Now, here in Florida right now, it's 97 degrees in the shop, so it's not that big of a deal, but it will crack when you put it on. It has to expand around this ball. And if it's cold, it will crack. 
I've had some people say, hey, I think mine had a fault. I got it from you and uh, when I installed it, it cracked. Yeah, this thing has to be hot. So put it in hot water. I bought this microwave in 1994 in my bachelor days and I got it from Walmart for $88. So back then this was a huge purchase for me. Well, it still works perfectly good today. Even though since I've been married, I think we've bought probably three or four microwaves and those super nice snooty ones that are all stainless and has a digital display like, you know, a Tesla and takes you forever to actually work it. And I think we've gone through at least three and the burnt out. This one, still going strong. It's not as strong as it used to be, so two minutes instead of a minute. But you know what? It still works today. hear it on the car so I don't know if you can hear that or not but I'm sure you can because it's pretty loud so we need to get this up apart get the bearing out new bearing in and put it back together this next S2000 we got to keep it secret because the person doesn't want anybody to know what they're doing so if you have a jealous wife and you don't want her to know what you're doing to your car we can be discreet. We won't even film it. In fact, it's right here. I'm not even going to show you it. What are we working on, George? I don't know. See how discreet we are? Nobody has to know. So this is actually getting a couple of parts. I can't tell you what it is in case, you know, someone watches this video and says, I knew it, you took it to LHT and had all those things done. But we're going to treat this just like it's our car, give it our LHT treatment. Uh, George is actually fixing a little thing right now that wasn't on his list and he didn't know it had an issue And we're not going to charge him because it's no big deal The only thing I'm going to show you is the top. This is pretty common, but the window is falling out We see this about actually two of these in the last two days at this issue and So top is done. That's all we're going to show you on this because this is top secret All we can tell you is it is a Honda soft top. So this one's good Brand new clutch, brand new top. This one is going to drive and look like a million bucks. Hopefully you watched the Miata video. That was an NC2. So I want to show you a quick dyno comparison just so you've got an idea. This is our 2008 S2000. We did a baseline dyno as soon as we bought it to give you an idea of what they make completely stock. This is a 2008. So it's the AP2. Makes a little bit more power than an AP1. So this is our car stock and the Miata stock. Of course, Redline is our S2000. But one thing to note, stock for stock, 
the Miata still has almost the same torque and it stays flatter. Remember the Miata is quite a bit lighter than the S2000. Of course, this is all at the top end. This is obviously a massive gain. And you can see how much the Miata holds straight. It doesn't dip, it stays pretty consistent all the way here. Now, just bolt-on tuning, the Miata really made a difference. Let me just show you that graph over the S2000. That is the tune graph. Again, red is Miata, blue is S2000. See how much torque it picked up all the way through here. Now this was a header, intake and exhaust, and a tune. So it picked up pretty much everywhere. It held strong all the way through here, all the way to about 5,800 RPMs. It's making more torque than the S2000. Now the S2000, obviously when it hits VTEC, it goes to the higher lift cam. Cams make a big difference. That's the jump that you see right here. On the S2000, the VTEC with the late engagement, obviously you see the power is falling off. So when VTEC engages, it feels a lot more exciting than what it is because it's already losing power. But you can see for a car that's quite a bit lighter, you can see how much power the Miata makes in the, in the mid-range, which is one of the reasons these are such a good track car. Combine that with, I think they're about 450 pounds lighter. Supercharger kit 442 and 290. You can see the graph changes quite a bit. I think boost fixes everything, but you imagine a Miata with an S2000 motor or even a K24 or a K20. That would be a heck of a race car, but that's just a quick graph just for fun, just to show you how much power an S2000 makes. Now the NC2 Miata also was quite a bit bigger. Scott is my build and he has a lot more room in that car than it did in his S2000. He used to have a white S2000 CR, but the NC2 is about the same dimensions on the outside, but it's quite a bit bigger on the inside. So it might be one of those options for you taller guys. And if I start toying with the idea of tuna Miatas, which somebody mentioned, I would like to put K motors in those things because I am a Honda fan. I think the Honda motor is way superior in every way. It's obviously a lot more power, but it's a proven platform and there's plenty of them out there. So that might be something that happens in the future. Just uh, keep your eye out for that. The Ford Edge we did probably a couple of years ago. He wanted a bit more noise and he wanted a little bit different exhaust tip. I'll see if I can find the video and link it. But basically we took the factory muffler and had the tips powder coated we welded on the exhaust tips and then we put a bypass valve. So it basically would bypass the factory muffler when you was in boost. Very clever little device. A lot of newer cars have those exhaust valves. Well, since then he's decided he wants it a little bit more noisy all the time because the only time it makes noise is obviously when you're on the throttle because it takes boost to open the valve to bypass the muffler. These are the mufflers he has bought with the tailpipe, so they should be pretty close to a bolt-on. Uh, rather than doing these little clamps here, which are usually a pain, we're gonna cut those and weld those. This tail section, we should be able to put our tip on here, and it'll give us the sound we're looking for. Obviously, that muffler is just a little straight-through resonator-style muffler. Should give him a little bit more noise, at least. Hopefully, it's what he's looking for. Not sure if you saw this, Doug DeMiro just did a video on an EP3, which is like Jeff's right here. Now Jeff's is a K24, so it's quite a bit more power, and he has the Vox, and we upgraded it from 4 lug to 5 lug, but pretty interesting to see Doug found that car, such a low mileage clean car, but if you're interested, we're going to be on the Dragon with this car, Jeff's going to drive it, this had a misfire the other day, broke a coil. We fixed it, it's back running, he's drove it down, he's letting know everything is good to go. But uh, the Dragon Meet is October 8th. Jeff will be in this, I will be in the CRX, George will be in the uh, Turbo 8th Gen. Who knows what Mike will be in? Mike's been a pretty secretive since the mouse incident on his Camaro, so he might have something. Let's get a sound clip. So we have to put it in gear to get enough load for it to build boost and open the valves, but you can definitely hear the change. show you the valve actually working it's right here you see that all right go ahead and hit it so you see that it's opening bypasses that muffler and goes straight into this tailpipe right here and then we changed 
that tip. This used to have that fake tip that was built into the bumper and then a tube just used to kind of stick into that hole. This was the look he wanted. He's going for the whole black look and he likes that still. So that's what we'll keep. We'll weld it onto his mufflers. Even when we get a bolt on system, it never bolts on, it's never right. If you look at this pipe, you see how this pipe is higher than this one right here? And we're pretty much centered in the middle. Actually, that right one can go up a little bit, but that's gonna make it go higher here. And then our tips are gonna come out crooked. So I think what we're gonna have to do is cut this loose and rotate this down. That will rotate this tip down here. If not, our tip's gonna look all goofy. It's like the Miata, we buy a bolt-on exhaust or he buys it and we have to spend an hour and a half making it fit. Or we buy a CRX exhaust and we spend four hours making it fit. <laughs> this is the best kind of shopping when it's somebody else's credit card. Yeah. We can go really crazy and buy all kinds of stuff. So Jeff bought the wagon, the red wagon, and you have the uh, GSR motor basically, right? Yeah, GSR motor, front wheel drive train. So it doesn't have any rear-wheel drive parts, of course, it's really hard to get. And if they do come available, you know, S1 are doing so many all-wheel drive conversions, it's kind of drove the price up. So it's going to make it front-wheel drive. So we have, let's put it first. George has expressed a lot of interest in this car, so if uh, Jeff bails out, George is in. Inline Pro. That was fast. You already got that handle? Yeah. Look at this, Inline Pro. I just ordered this day before yesterday. Are they Florida, local, Florida? Virginia. Oh. Yeah. So well, Florida will be here. Anything like if you cut the van handle off, anything up to like... Claremont, like right across like from Like Georgia us. is all next day. Yeah, yeah, you ordered something from Claremont. Can you get that coming like today? Yeah, I can shoot up there. On my just go way. get it. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a it's Georgia's HKS exhaust. Yeah, so it kind of cuts off if I storage it. Here's what it looks like, stainless steel cast. I've made 500 horsepower in this manifold and the beauty of it is it fits with AC and power steering. Does have the old style two bolt flange for like the Tile 38 or 35, whatever it is. But everyone makes a little flange now. We built the last one, but we bought it for this little flange that bolts on here and it turns it to a v-band then you can put a little mvs on there which is a real compact small little wastegate but what a terrific piece that is thank you inline pro for getting it here so fast this is fantastic <laughs> list right here mounts we're gonna do Hasport mounts and harness Jeff's getting a hold of monotech right now uh, axles we'll go ahead and get from Hasport the hydro conversion rather than buying a cable we have to buy pedal assembly because the car is auto we're gonna get pedal assembly and rather than building a or buying a hydro conversion we're gonna build a hydro conversion like we did on our CRX it's just much nicer AC compressor dryer and condenser is better just to buy new believe it or not they're so much cheaper on amazon and it seems like they're the only people that have it 
shift, uh, shifter assembly. We need a manual pedal assembly, which we found a couple on eBay. And of course, exhaust. We've got to build the plate. PLM have a plate. We're gonna find out if it works. If not, we'll build it. But they have it right now. They have a couple of them for 50 bucks. We just ordered that. We'll see if that works. That should pretty much get us going. Apart from, oh, we need a radiator. We need a B-series radiator. Another big thanks to Inline Pro for getting this manifold to us so fast. So we have a customer with a really clean Del Sol original B-Series VTEC Del Sol, so look out for that. We're gonna do a full turbo build on that. But like we used to do in the old days, AC friendly, power steering friendly, a normal car. If you get a chance, check out this website. I want you to look at some of our old work. It's tamparacing.com. If you look through there, there is a little segment that says shop forums. Look for LHT Performance, click on that. We have a whole bunch of pictures in there. A lot of the pictures are through Photo Bucket and we're not paying Photo Bucket for their storage, so it's gonna have their, their watermark through it. So just kind of look around that because I don't wanna pay Photo Bucket when I don't use them. But that was how we did it back in the day before we had servers to put our pictures on. But temporation.com. We used to use a lot of manifolds similar to this. Back in the day, I couldn't afford an inline pro manifold, so I actually built my own and I built like a little tubular manifold to resemble this for the fitment because the fitment with the right turbo fits in the block area and you can keep the AC and you can run a full three inch downpipe, which this is one of the bends we're going to use. It's a stainless 120 degree mandrel bend and it's so nice because it will fit with AC and have clearance and you have three inch downpipe. But we did a lot of those. Once this thing came out, it was a game changer because we didn't have to build manifolds anymore. And we used to use this, it's stainless steel cast. Anyway, enough about this. See you in the next video. Don't forget, enjoy your cars and enjoy your turbo builds.